Hi, my name is Rachel Saw. I'm going to be talking about the Target hack of 2017 or 2013. Uh, first, I'm going to do a little bit of background information. Um, then we're going to um, understand how it actually occurred. Um, and then we're going to talk about a couple of outcomes. First thing is the Target hack was one of the biggest hacks um, at the time in 2013 that any corporation has dealt with. Um, a couple things to keep in mind that um, millions of credit card information was stolen from customers, but not all of it was credit card information. Some of it was only emails and cell phone numbers. Some of it was actual credit card information and social security numbers. Um, the other thing to think is there was multiple warnings from uh, previous firms. So one of them being the firm that they actually hired to do security um, and another one being the Pentagon. They actually warned them and sent multiple warnings in time to prevent this, but as we all know, Target did ignore them. <clears throat> um, in the aftermath of uh, the hack, a lot of states and a lot of corporations and a lot of other things up their security measures, realizing that, hey, this isn't, um, we, we hope to n prevent this in the future. Uh, many states actually change laws regarding security information, so it could prevent it in the future. Um, <clears throat> so to start off, how it happened. Um, Target hired a third party company to update their security systems at that time, about two weeks before um, Black Friday took place. Um, it started with them updating the point of sale, um, point of sale uh, systems to prevent attacks is what it was meant to do. <clears throat> now this third party um, did not actually have a really good security system set in place and security measures. Um, they really were flawed and many people warned them that, hey, this wasn't a good thing, but it was cheaper than most other places, so that's why they went with it. Um, when they were hired and everything, they actually clicked on a fraudulent email. Um, this is known as phishing. Uh, basically means one of their employees sent or clicked on an email that, that released all their information to the hackers. Um, when this happened, the hackers were able to gain access to target servers under that employee's identity. So it looked like to everyone else that it was just a third party and not um, a hacker. And due to this, um, they were able to get a foothold. Now, many warnings were sent prior to them getting that foothold from the Pentagon, from um, the firm that they do pay to make sure their security systems are up to date and everything. So in other words, there was warnings, they just kind of kept on ignoring them, thinking it wasn't actually gonna happen. Um, next, we're gonna talk about how they were able to get into target servers, which is they used the method called kill chain. Um, kill chain is basically a method on how they are able to, using phishing and everything else, how they're able to just gain access and you are gonna be able to um, not be able to detect them. <clears throat> so first thing is they do reconnaissance, um, basically gathering any, any information. So. For this, they were able to find out that who Target's third party was, and they were able to send the phishing email. Um, next thing is weaponizing. They're going to basically put together that email, um, put together any kind of uh, Microsoft Office, any kind of Adobe, PDF, anything like that, that can be sent into a third party's computer and just um, take all that information and send it to the hackers. Um, next, you're going to... Uh, they're gonna do the delivery system. So in this case, it was their uh, email. So they sent the email to the actual um, third party people. They clicked on it, they were able to give them information, they were able to gain their um, account information, and then they were able to get into um, Target's servers. That would be exploitation. Um, when they got into the servers, that's when uh, all their companies and all their security companies that they had hired previously um, started realizing that, hey, someone's in your system, that you need to check this. Um, that's when warnings started to come in for Target. Um, next thing is they installed their backdoor or their trapdoor key, basically meaning any kind of information already taken, if they were caught, it would automatically shut off, but they would still keep that information, the um, Target would not be able to pull it back from them. So. Essentially, they're installing all this information and being able to install their hack into um, target systems that um, takes out any important information such as credit card information, um, personal information, emails, anything like that, and sending it to their servers to be stored. Um, next is going to be the command and control. 
For this, it basically means they take control of the computers. They have full on computer access. They are in the servers. They are looking at everyone's information. They are doing everything possible to collect as much information as they can in the time span they have. Um, the next thing is the attackers achieve what they came to do and that's when they got realized by Target. Their intrusion got realized and that's when everything's gonna shut down. <clears throat> so from here, now there are a lot of points that Target could have taken action to prevent this. Um, one is a third party could have um, not clicked on that fraudulent email. They could have just been able to say, no, I'm not gonna click on this. And maybe they, if they had better security systems in place, they would have been able to stop that. Um, another thing is, all the um, warnings from the Pentagon, from their um, security firm that they hired, any any kind of warning they had, they could have taken into consideration because they were given warnings multiple weeks um, or one week or multiple days uh, previous to Black Friday when the delivery started happening, when they were starting to gain access. They were given multiple warnings and they continuously ignored them. Um, <clears throat> Another thing is they could have had better security measures. Um, if, if you know anything about targets, security measures, they had all of personal information from customers, from anyone who stepped into the store, all their associates, they had all their information on one server rather than multiple. A better way of doing that is creating all personal information like credit card or emails or phone numbers or anything like that, putting that on a separate server and then putting everything else on a different server. Um, unfortunately, Target did not do this. They put it all on one making it easier for the hackers to only hack one server and then get all the information. Um, so that would basically be a way to actually prevent it. So another way of analyzing the preventing is the opposite of the kill chain, which is going to be detect, deny, disrupt, degrade, deceive, and destroy. So one, the first thing they should have done is detect it as soon as um, they were able to start getting information. They were able to detect it then, they could deny it. Now, obviously, they're going to keep trying to come back. So then they're going to try to disrupt what um, what is their attack plan. From there, you're going to degrade it. So you're just going to analyze what they're trying to do. You're trying to analyze their program that they're using. You're trying to analyze everything possible that they're originally trying to hack into your, um, your systems are. And then you're going to deceive them. So you're going to send a falsified message. You might be sending false information, anything possible to be able to deceive them. Or you could be sending a link that deceives them. And then after that, you're going to destroy it. So kind of like a Trojan horse. Um, and that's kind of what uh, a better way of containing this and making sure this doesn't happen is to basically send almost like a Trojan horse through and be like, hey, yeah, here's the information. In reality, everything just implodes on itself. Um, so a couple changes happened after this. Um, one is Target was forced to pay out over $300 million. And that was not just towards customers, that was also towards any states, any credit card companies, anyone with who could prove that they had documentation, that their information was taken, something was hacked of theirs, something happened. All credit card companies who were involved automatically got it just because ass assumption of they did have, uh, they did get hacked. Um, another thing that came about it is many states actually enforce different laws on security measures. So many states, especially where Target is based, um, they made stricter um, measures for security. So they'd be like, okay, you have to have this level of security, you have to be able to pass this thing. Along with credit card companies, they did the exact same. They upped their security level in order for that company to be able to use those credit cards. So say you go to some state or you go to some company, um, and you have a credit card and they don't have the correct security measures that your credit card um, wants that company or that state to have, you will not be able to use your credit card in that state or that company. Um, another thing is Target ended up going through this big lawsuit and in the end they were told they have to do more than one server. They have to put information on multiple servers, especially important information, anything to do with any customers coming in anything to do with credit card, anything like that, they have to put on different information because that is sensitive information. So all sensitive had to be put on separate servers. And sometimes it would be multiple servers for that sensitive information. But they were told they had to split it up along with paying the hefty fines of everything. Um, another thing is corporations started realizing that they can't hire just 
roundabout way third company people and they can't just hire random people to do any of their security updates or do anything with their business. So they started looking at more reviews. They started actually analyzing who could actually be able to come in and be like, okay, yes, this is who we want to work with our servers. So essentially that's what they started doing is they started realizing who can actually work with their servers and who can't. So that that's that. And basically I hope you guys learned something from this. And as we all know,